Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. To my great faith family, to those of you who are viewing our broadcast, and to all of our friends, we're now going to be on YouTube, so stay tuned. We are moving forward. We are doing something new in 2020. Amen. We are doing something new in 2020. Once again, good morning to you. I hope so far you have had a beautiful week. God bless you all. Now this morning, I have a treat for you this morning. I have a young man here who's going to come and break the bread of life this morning. Don't you touch that dial. <laughs> There is a word straight from heaven for you this morning. We have our guest speaker this morning. He is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. He earned a doctorate degree in ministry. He is an associate pastor at Camp Road Ministries, where Reverend Dr. Ivan Ford Butler is the pastor. He is married to her sister, Eva May Webb, he has two children, a son and a daughter, Ashley and Ashton Webb. Amen? Now, I want you to stay there, and I want you to stay tuned. I know that God has given him a word for this season, and I know your heart is going to be blessed today. And so, welcome with me, join in with me as we welcome Reverend Dr. Ian Webb. May God bless you all. Dr. Webb. Amen. 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 Good morning to all. Good morning. It is indeed a pleasure to be here at Great Faith Healing and Delivering Ministry where the pastor is Dr. Daisy Winder. I want to say thank you for this opportunity to share God's word in your pulpit. I pay respects to the Holy Spirit who is the head of my life. I want to say thank you also to my senior pastor Amen. for all of that he has done in grooming me to this stage. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks this morning for yet another opportunity that we can come into your presence. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable unto thee, my Lord and my Creator. Amen. This morning, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 16, uh, chapter 16, 19 through 31. But I will be reading as far as 24. And it reads, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of swords and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from, his, from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in the flame. This morning I want to speak to you from the topic where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? I want you to know that all of us one day, if God delays his coming, we'll die. We have a choice to make whilst we are alive. Amen. 
Then uh, we will have God's heavenly reward or the fiery destruction of hell after death. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13, Paul answers the question that some of the believers had. And he said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. The Bible uses this word sleep as a softened form of the dead that are in Christ. My brothers and sisters, where will you spend eternity? In the story that Jesus is telling, it is referred to as a parable, but it is an eyewitness story because Jesus sees into eternity. The story of two men. One man of wealth and the other of want. One is a rich man, the other a poor beggar. Jesus said that a certain rich man who was clothed in fertile and fine linen fed sumptuously every day. And this word sumptuously means splendor, expensive. He was living in luxury. His life was basically a party. Some named this man Divis. But Divis is just a Latin word that means rich. Then we have the man of want, a poor man, a beggar who wanted the crumbs from the rich man's table. He had no money for medicine. He had no money for food. He had to beg. And the only solace he had was that the dogs came and licked his swords. We have two men, one wealthy, one poor. Then we have two places. Because first of all, Lazarus dies first. Lazarus dies first. Then the rich man dies. All right. There's a there is no reference to the burial of Lazarus. The only thing the Bible says is that he died. But more like more than likely in those days, the poor would be placed either in the potter's field, or they be thrown in Gehenna, which is the dump outside the city walls of Jerusalem, where Jesus said that the fire never is quenched, and the worm died not, but that is just the dump. But the death of the rich man in verse 22 the Bible says the rich man also died and was buried. And no doubt, this rich man, he had a lavish funeral. Mm, go ahead now. He had the, the gold or the silver or the mahogany casket. Mm. He had mourners. He had persons that wailed for him. But Lazarus didn't have all those things. And even with all the money that he had, he couldn't buy himself one extra day. That tells us that no matter where we are on the socioeconomic scale, whether we are at the bottom or where we are at the top, we all will die and have to stand before God. Death is the appointment that all of us must keep. What is death? You may ask. I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Death is in scripture is the separation of the spirit and the soul from the body. We find in James chapter 2, verse 26. For all for as the body without the spirit mm -hmm. is dead, so faith without works is dead. Yeah, amen. We are contrast in life. Then there's a contrast in the death. 
Now let us look at two men contrast in eternity. Jesus shows us what happens to those men after they die. And it lays the foundation for us of what happens to us when we die or our loved ones. The Bible teaches that before the ascension of Jesus Christ, there was a place where the soul of men and women went after death. This place has three parts or three compartments, more or less. Abraham bosom, which is called paradise. Hades or hell, which is a grave. And the Bible says, a great gulf fix between them. Abraham bosom. Abraham bosom was, um, we are told, called paradise. It is a place where the righteous dead go. According to our text, it is a place of comfort. In verse 25, says Lazarus is comforted in this place. Immediately after Lazarus' death, the Bible says that angels came and took him to paradise or Abraham's bosom. Now Hades, which is referred to as a grave, but it also, Jesus tells the story that Hades has a special place for those that do not seek God, that those that are not righteous, that those that are not born again. And that special place is a place of torment. And into it, the wicked dare go. The rich man went to this place. And he is representative of all those that do not accept or trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. As paradise. And between paradise and Hades, we are told there's a great gulf fix that cannot be crossed. Let's look at what happened to those two men. One who went who died and went to paradise, and the other who died and went to hell. Lazarus, the one who died first. Two things. I mentioned about Lazarus. First of all, he was carried by the angels. God sent his angels to escort him to the place where he's supposed to go. Secondly, he was comforted in paradise. In verse 22, the Bible says, when the beggar died, he was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. God has a place for you and me. Amen. And if we want to get there, we need to examine ourselves. See if we are following Christ. We need to, Paul says, make, we need to work out our own soul salvation Amen. with fear and trembling. The rich man who also died in eternity. And three things we can see from his experience. Reading from Luke chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, the Bible says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in the flame. The first thing the Bible tells us about hell in this text is that it's a place of misery. You don't want to go there. So you need to make up your mind today. You need to make up your mind now. You don't want to be in a place of misery. And, 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 and for the black people in this world, we always complain that we can't help here on earth all the time. You don't want to die and then go 
hope and hell to the end. So my admonishment to you and all of us as human beings is to make our calling and election sure. This man was in misery. But hell is not only a place of misery. Hell is also a place of memory. Because in, in verse 25, it, it says, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth the good things, and likewise Lazarus the evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. My Lord. So hell is a place of memory. A lot of people believe that when they go to hell, it's going to be a body. Mm. They're going to meet up with their friends and they can do the things they used to do before. They can dance and they can celebrate and they can frolic all over the no place. Way. But hell is not that kind of place. No, no, no. Hell is a place of torment. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hell is a place of torment. There's nothing that you will not remember. When Abraham tells the rich man, remember we have all of our faculties in hell. We can hear. We can see. And we can experience torment. Then, Abraham, then the Bible says, not only is hell a place of misery, not only is hell a place of memory, but hell is a place of mourning. The Bible tells us that in hell he opened his eyes. In hell, this man was conscious. He knew what was going on around him. He was able to communicate. He was able to see. He was able to hear. He was exercising all of his faculties. But the thing that that all that I, I always see in this is the torment. We don't want to be tormented. We don't want to be uncomfortable. But hell is that place of uncomfort and torment. The unsaved dead continue in hell until the final judgment. The Bible says that there will be a day when small and great, everyone will understand before God. This is called the great white throne judgment. Yes. This great day of judgment, all will stand before God. The small and great, the rich and the, and the poor, the educated and the uneducated, and the, uneducated. the black and the, and the white, My God. the fat and the skinny, <laughs> everybody. Nobody will be exempt. Revelation tells us that we will understand before God. You find that in Revelation 20. Verse 11 through 15. Every believer who died before Jesus Christ's ascension went into paradise. But when Jesus died on the cross and was buried and rose again on the day of his ascension, something changed. Paradise was moved. Therefore, in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 8 to 10 says, Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gift unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Jesus went to, into paradise and he took all the old saints, all those who died, all the righteous dead, out of paradise. And he took them with him to heaven. Preach. How do we know that Jesus went into paradise? Go ahead now. I'm glad you asked. Remember what he said to the thief on the cross. And Jesus said to him, 
Verily I say unto thee, today shall thou be with me in paradise. In paradise. But paradise is no longer where it was then. As Paul tells us, he was caught up into paradise. And he heard unspeakable words, which he, is not lawful for a man to honor. So paradise is no longer in the grave. Paradise is with God yes. in heaven. Hallelujah. So when we, as believers, leave this world, we are not going down, mm. but we're going up Hallelujah. into the third heaven. Hallelujah. The Bible records God has a house prepared for us. A house not made with hands. Eternal in the heaven. When we die, our bodies goes to the grave. But we know that our bodies is just a temporary dwelling place. Thank you, Jesus. Our spirit and our soul goes to be with God. If we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is the important question. Do you have a relationship yes. with Jesus Christ? Have you been to the river mm. and been baptized? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you saved? Mm. My Lord. Mm. For the Bible declares that no one can enter God's heaven if you're not saved. Amen. And what does that mean? The word means saved. It means that you have trusted Jesus Christ yes. with your life, with your soul, with your spirit. You have accepted him yes. as Lord and Savior. You have turned from your wicked ways and are now following him. That was it mean to be saved. Amen. You have a relationship with God and Christ. Yes. So where is heaven? Heaven is a place. Where God is. Yes. For the Bible declares that the heavens of heaven are the Lord, but the earth is his footstool. Yes. Heaven is where God is. But heaven is where Jesus is. Jesus tells us, the Bible tells us in John 14 and 3, that if I go to a prayer place for you, mm. I will come again. Yes. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, mm. there you may be also. Heaven is wherever Jesus is. When Jesus gave the thief on the cross the assurance, he said that you would be with me in paradise. With me. Being with Jesus is paradise. Being with Jesus is where heaven is. Paul tells us to be absent from this body. Is to be present with the Lord. I want you to know that God has a place prepared for us. Yes. You can choose as I close. You can choose to accept or reject God's plan yes. of salvation. God sends no one to hell. They send themselves by refusing to accept his forgiveness. Amen. The time to get right with God is now. Yeah, right, now. Yeah. right now. The Bible says today mm. is the day of salvation. Yes. If you hear my voice, mm. harden yeah. not your heart. My brothers and sisters, where will you spend My God. eternity? Mm. I want to remind you that you will not live forever. My Lord. Mm. And the Bible declares that it's appointed unto man once to die. Yes. And after death, the judgment. Yes. The Bible also tells us that there is a place mm. that when we die, mm. if we are right with him, we will be with him. But there's a place for those wicked dead. Mm. In, in Daniel chapter 12 and verse, and verse 2, it tells us that all of us who die 
will go to the dust. But some of us will never rise to everlasting life. Amen. But all of, us, all of us will rise to everlasting destruction or condemn. My God. That's punishment. We always want to say that, that, that God will not destroy his people or destroy us in fire. Because God is not that kind of a God. But the Bible tells us that God is a just God. Oh, yes. And he's even in no wise clear the guilty. My God. When you die, my brothers and sisters, and we all will die. I'm not saying that you're going to die now. But when you die. Go ahead now. And we must die. Where will you spend eternity? Yes. Where will you be? Will you be with God? Or will you be in the other place? My Lord. The other place is a terrible place. Terrible place. And one thing I want to remind you, because as I said earlier, some people think they're going to head the party. Mm. But the Bible tells us in Revelation 4 and 11 that there's no rest mm, in hell. Mm. My Lord. And the smoke of that torment ascended up from ever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, Jesus. who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of, the, of his name. My brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that when we die, we are right with God. Yes. And we do that in the land of the living. Yes. We do that now. While we breathe, while we move, while we have our being, yes. we can bend our knees and bow our heads and ask God to forgive us of our sins yes. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let God know that we trust him. We believe that he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes. And our trust is in him for our salvation. I want to invite you to bow your heads as we pray. And the first prayer I want to pray is for those who want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And let us pray. Father, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we come before you this morning, Father, we want to confess that we have sinned and come short of your glory. Yes. Father, we confess to you that we are sinners. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. Yes, Lord. We ask you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We believe that Jesus Christ is your son. Yes. We believe that you raised him from the dead. We accept your salvation. Yes. We accept you as Lord and Savior of our lives. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our Father and our God, we give you thanks yet another time as we continue in prayer for you are you alone deserve all our praise. You and you alone deserve all the glory. Father, we exalt you above all. And we ask your blessing upon the works and the toil of our hands. Father, we ask your blessing upon the preacher of this house, the pastor of this house, Dr. Winder. We pray your anointing Thank will you, fresh Thank you, in her life. Yes, sir. Father, we pray that you will indeed comfort and strengthen her as she go about your work in this vineyard. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you will indeed give her all that she needs you, to accomplish your work down here on earth. And God, we just thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you and have a good day. Amen.